Hello, Mr. Minnick, helping students understand the importance and power and the overall coolness of for loops. In the programming language Python that I'm studying with uh, these students here at this uh, Central Pennsylvania school, we uh, usually have to uh, type the line of code import turtle to use what are called turtle graphics. And in this particular uh, situation, I'm going to be importing time also. The time module will allow me to use the, the sleep function, which the sleep method, which will cause a nice little delay to occur every once in a while. So sometimes I put little uh, comments in here, uh, sleep function. Um, that's being used for what are called, just generally speaking, turtle graphics. And now let's move on. You know, I don't have time in this demo program to do something like pen equals turtle dot turtle. That would be good style, but no time for that. So I'm just going to start with the fun stuff of a turtle named turtle. You're allowed to do this as long as you spell it turtle, spelled that way. You don't have to declare it as a turtle object variable. Um, let's say we give it an interesting color like blue. Uh, you can try different colors in double quotes uh, if you wish. Let's hide the turtle's shape so an annoying triangle or the outline of a turtle doesn't actually show up. So I'm going to use the old hide turtle method or function. And for now, for testing purposes, just to make sure everything's working, I'm going to make the turtle go forward 50 pixels. Running this Python computer program and checking out its output here at the website replit, R-E-P-L.it, in case you're interested. This is uh, what happens as the output. Over on the console window, there is no output. But in the turtle graphics window, because we imported turtle, we can do fun graphical stuff like this. Of course, we know that turtles upon birth always face the east and they're in the center of the grid at the point zero equals X and zero equals Y, which according to your geometry teacher is the middle of the Cartesian coordinate system right here in the middle. Okay, uh, let's have some fun with this. And let's say that the turtle then pauses. And I'm just going to use the command called sleep for one second. One second because I put a one in the sleep function. Then the turtle makes a left turn. To make a turtle go left, according to the Python turtle API library, you would type left 90 degrees and then to make the turtle go forward again uh, 50 pixels duh you would type turtle forward 50 let's see what happens so far I'm going to test that much of my code and after a pause and a left turn of 90 seconds it should be going up here and it's not I'm a little worried right now it looks like I have a red error in the console window to go check out. I'm going to click the, the console tab. And I messed up because there is no sleep command. Um, I got my computer languages mixed up. Well, no, I, not mixed up. There is a sleep command. But the sleep command isn't in the turtle library module. Sleep is actually in time where I said that. And I forgot what I put in my own comment. This needs to be time.sleep. I messed up. I'm a teacher. I'm not a perfectionist. So now by typing time there instead of turtle, I can, by typing time there instead of turtle, it now works correctly. It did a little pause there before the left turn. Well, we could uh, copy and paste and do another sleep and another left turn and another forward. By highlighting all that code and using copy, then moving my cursor and blinking it there, oh, there's no paste. Well, 
you can always hold down Command or Control V and paste a total of four copies of this. I'll put the blank lines in there to show you for good style my organization. I had one extra turtle dot forward, so now I have a total of four sections where it's forward, sleep, left, forward, sleep, left. Running this Python program, I now get a nice little square over here that happens to be the color blue. Cool stuff. Well, this is so elementary school. This is what somebody would do in intro to computer science using Python at Why I'm Missing. This is not what somebody would use in the more funner class called, everybody? Computer, computer games and apps. Yeah, games and apps. Yeah, games and apps. So let's turn this, okay, we're not turning this into a game yet, but, but we use more powerful techniques. So right now, we use a for loop for I in range. Parentheses four, because somebody with the initials Jack M, the last initial M, but the first name Jack, knows that there are four sides to a square. So he deletes the extra three, bye-bye. He moves that up just for style, and he runs this program, expecting to see now four again on a square. But instead he gets nothing. Now this is a fictitious person named Jack M. He has bad input on line eight, but that worked a second ago on line eight. Oh, here's the flaw. When you have a for loop, you're required to have at least one line of code be in its body. So perhaps you do something like this. Print hello world. Indented, because Python requires that. When you run this, you get four hello worlds because it's a for loop. And because of the way the range function works, that means it goes around four times. So now that I've indented this, let's indent these lines of code like I should have originally. I run it, I get bad input on line 11. Well, what's wrong with that? I indented it. Oh, it's over indented. The body statements in your for loop must all be lined up perfectly. And one space off or one whole tab off is wrong no matter how you look at it. Now that I have all four of those indebted, it's going to work. I still get four hello worlds here. But more interestingly, over in the graphical output window, I get my square. So you can send some of your output to the console window using the print command. And then you can have other output be directed here to the graphical window using turtle pen graphics. I don't really want that print hello world. That was just temporary for testing purposes. So I'm deleting it. I like that blank line there, but I don't want blank lines here. Let's run this version of it, and it does work. Notice how slow it takes because it's, it's making left turns, but with this one second... Uh, pause on purpose because I wanted to be kind of slow. Yeah, you could change this to like 0.1. That would be a tenth of a second. It now goes a little quicker. You can also change the turtle speed, but that's not going to change the, the sleep function. You can make the turtle speed zero like you did in maybe previous assignments. But with the, with the one second pause in there that I just put back, you still get one second pauses. The, the turtle does sprint down each leg of the square, but it's still sleeping for a second each time around the for loop. So that causes a nice little variation of like speed variations if you want to try different techniques like that. I'm, Removing that from this demo program because it's not really the point I'm trying to make. So there you go. You saved a lot of code by putting those three lines of code inside a for loop rather than with brute force redundantly uh, filling up your code window. Oh, you say you don't really 
like squares because they're boring. Okay, we could change this. We could put the number three in there to make it a triangle, three sides to a triangle, and run that. Oh, it's not a triangle. It's just an incomplete square that's missing its fourth side. Oh, but you say triangles don't have a sum of four angles that are each right 90 degree angles adding up to 360. Yes, you remember what you learned in honors geometry, or maybe you're currently taking academic geometry. Maybe you never took geometry, but you just paid attention in fifth grade when some teachers such as all names been changed, but like Mr. Arnold taught you that, you know, how many degrees are in, an, in a polygon. So you do this, you change this to eight. And you know that 360 divided by eight is, what is 360 divided by eight? I'm not taking anybody's word for it. I'm just going to put the division right in there. And by having eight there and 360 degrees divided by eight, check it out. I get a hexagon. So hexagons, squares, it all comes out working. You could put six here then change that to six and you get a pentagon. Wait, that's a hexagon. What did I have before? My students are smarter than me. They remember more than me. So they all get these things called grad tickets. That when I sign them, they're keepsakes. That when they're 80 years old and I'm gone, it might be worth nothing on eBay. Uh, they have my signature on a grad ticket. Okay, so better than this would be somebody with the uh, name Jack G might say, hey, why not use a constant called sides and set it equal to six? Or maybe even better yet, num underscore sides. And everywhere that we wanted to use the number of sides on the polygon, we put that constant there and change the six to like 16 and get wild and crazy and that's a 16 gone. Uh, it takes 16 seconds to draw it because of the time delay. You can take that sleep function out, but you can pretty much have any polygon you ever wanted, including one with a million sides. But I don't have time for that. So I'll just make the point that the more sides you have, the closer it gets to a perfect smooth circle. I'm going to reduce my pause to 0.01 seconds. And now I get a, the orbit of an asteroid or a comet that only comes around the Earth every once in a while. But there it is. It closed itself up, so I only see part of it. But that is so close to a circle that when I zoom in, it's, it's looking pretty good as it's pretty close to a circle. That, that had 40 sides to it. Oh, what if you want to fill it? Fill it in with this color. Then you just, uh, I think, type turtle.beginfill. Uh, begin fill needs an underscore in there. We've learned this already. And then you would need outside of the loop to do turtle.endfill. I'm, of course, going to change this back to a square, something I can actually see on my screen. And so it fills it in by using a begin fill end fill as if it's a set of parentheses there. You can get a filled in square. Now this is only for the people that want uh, more power and, and, and fun in life. But you can put a loop inside of a loop. You can't use the same variable name i. So I'm just going to use j. And I'm going to uh, make this loop go uh, five times and put the colon here. 
and indent all of this code right here by hitting the tab key once. So I'm putting a loop inside of a loop. Sometimes we call that nested loops. Can anybody predict what the output of this is going to be? Well, it's really just going to be a square on top of a bunch of squares. But each time before, say, I start that loop, I'm going to say turtle dot go to a random spot on my universe. Random dot rand int zero comma uh, 200, no, negative 200, positive 200, and go to needs an X and a Y, so that's the X, the Y is also going to be rand, rand, int, negative 200, comma 200. And by importing random up here as an optional module that Python allows you, that allows you to use the rand int function. Check this out. Okay. I should have done pen up and pen down. Okay, no, maybe I wanted this. But probably I should have done pen up and pen down. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer of this video to insert a pen up and a pen down where necessary so that you get four filled in squares at random spots on your screen in the viewable area between negative 200 and positive 200. Every time you run this program, you're going to get a different set of ink splotches because of the loop within a loop, and you can have a lot more fun with that. I'm going to hashtag out the begin fill and fill because that annoys me a little bit. And you know what? The pen, the pen up and pen down annoys me too. So uh, turtle dot pen down here and a pen up right before I do the go to. And so in closing here, before the bell rings here on this day in February 2019, I get four random squares, five, five random squares, because the outer loop is five, but the inner loop is a square because of the num sides constant. Okay, uh, have a great day. That's uh, an example of a for loop drawing polygons, and then with the extra bonus of a for loop inside of a for loop, also called nested loops.